Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you a few of the steps and everything that I have taken to create this beautiful bearded iris. Just before we start, I do want to say that the reference for this is from Pixabay and I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you. And if you do want to follow along with the full tutorial, it is available over on my Patreon page. It's there step by step. It's a just over four hour tutorial. So go and check that out if you want to draw along with me and learn some of these new kind of techniques because this isn't something that you see me draw very often. Usually we have animals here and also usually we start with the eyes but it's a flower we have no eyes so I decided to start with the most obvious choice which was the stem and it was the obvious choice because this is actually where a lot of the darker colors were and a lot of the shadows so I wanted to make sure to get those in first so as you can see I'm starting off with the stem and for this I did actually only have the one green pencil which was pine green and to create some of the lighter green tones that you'll eventually see through here, I actually mixed the pine green with my only yellow pencil, which was light chrome yellow. So to create some lighter tone varieties, I've actually layered those two colours together to create some lighter green areas. And it worked really nicely. And it did actually turn out really well because I used the yellow through some parts of the iris in the center they've got some like little pollen section that i use the yellow for so it ties in really nicely into the green but for the stem i added in little few tones of blue and everything to create the shadows along with the green and just try to create as much of a dark tone as possible through here so on to the actual flower so this was a process and it was one that I really enjoyed and if you do follow along with this either on Patreon or by yourself I really do hope that you enjoy this as well because it was really fun to do and of course it was mainly fun because it was a different subject to what I usually do. Um, so I started off by adding in a base layer onto the petal. So this particular petal had, um, it was mostly white or this light tone and then around the edges it had all of this texture so it had the purple edges and then the white inner so for the white inner I've actually used a cold grey one and I've used the cold grey one because this has more kind of blue bluey purple tones and obviously I wanted to use something that had some of those cooler tones so hence the cold grey one I didn't want to use the warm grey one because that would have given off too much of like a yellow kind of hue um, or as I wanted a little bit of the blue and on top of that I did actually use a light layer of sky blue as well to just enhance the kind of lightness so when you add sky blue in particular I find onto grey areas it does tend to make them look whiter so just a little tip for you there but for the edges of the iris here, you can see I've kind of added in the darker areas first and then I'm going through and adding in the texture and some more of the saturated colour. I do want to mention that this particular piece, I did use a combination of my usual Faber-Castell Polychromos, but I also used four... Holbein coloured pencils as well and one in particular is the workhorse for this piece and that is a very apt name for this piece the iris pencil and that's number 443 in case you were wondering so I've used the Holbein pencils which were a bit more of a waxy based pencil and the polychromos the polychromos were really good for adding in the finer details and the Holbein pencils were just good for just general layering and that kind of thing but you can see the texture on this particular petal it's got a lot of like these dots and to create those I just used a sharp pencil and I used a stippling so I just dotted down the pencil didn't really follow any kind of pattern or anything just let the pencil fall because then it's a bit more natural I find that if you're trying to copy each individual little dot that you can see on a reference photo or each individual detail it tends to not look as natural and nice as when you're just kind of letting the pencil fall and letting the things just go wherever they want. The texture here, it doesn't actually look too fantastic up close, like right up close, but when you are looking at it as a whole and from far away, the texture is really magic. So it does really convey the texture 
of the iris by using this method and it was really fun to do as well because it's not a method that I get to use when I'm drawing general wildlife either so that was really fun. The yellow centre here you can I don't know what this part of the flower is called if anybody knows can you let me know in the comments below because I just keep calling it like it looks like a little furry tongue or a bit of like a toothbrush and it just kind of comes down the center of this petal and to create that texture because it's kind of slightly hairy I've used a little bit of a fur line method so if you're not familiar with that I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you so you can kind of see how I create I call them tapered lines um, and it just it's the method that I use to create fur so I've used that method for this kind of like hairy looking thing uh, that's coming down the middle here and then to create some more shadow and detail in there I've used some burnt ochre which is more of an orange so it's a darker variety of the yellow and I've used that to enhance that texture and to add shadow in between some of those little areas through there and I think it worked really nicely you can kind of see a little bit of that texture I haven't gone absolutely mad by adding in the darker orange I've left it really sporadic and quite subtle and I've used a light touch through there as well to help to create that kind of subtle look but I think it works really nicely and it creates a fantastic texture in my opinion so I was really pleased with how that came out for the actual petals you can see the process that I'm using here so one of the main things that I do throughout all of the petals here is adding in the darker shadows first. This is something that I found to be incredibly useful because then you can plot out all of the curves and all of the folds in the petals and a lot, if you've seen a bearded iris in real life, you'll know that the petals are kind of like, they're kind of heavy and then they kind of fall and they kind of drape and they flute and they just they fall incredibly nicely and it can look a little bit daunting to kind of add all of those in when you're looking at this piece you're like oh I don't know if I can create the uh, realistic nature of these petals but I find that by adding in the darker bits first so adding in all of the shadow areas and then mapping out any particular way that those shadows are falling that works wonderfully and you can see here I've added in those shadows and then I've gone in with my lighter tone and then I'm building up the mid tones and then working to darker once again. I've also used a mixture of warmer colours and cooler colours so I've used a majority for the shadows the iris pencil but then I've also where there are some more blue toned cooler areas I've used some of the blue violet from the polychromos to add in slightly cooler toned shadows and even though this kind of has an overall kind of blue purple feeling there are elements of pink through here in the elements of pink are where you can kind of see the sun or the light shining through the petals so I've had to kind of keep that in mind and I've used the amethyst from the Holbein pencils to create the pink tone which is a really lovely colour and I've also used a little bit of the mauve as well from the Holbeins as well but you can see on the petal I've also added in some texture using some lines and following the curvature of the petal and all of that kind of thing and you can see here on this small section that I'm doing exactly the same process as what I just explained I'm putting in the dark shadows where you can see any kind of overlaps or um, as I said folding and fluting of the petals and then I'm going in with a light colour and then adding in all of the mid-tones and using some light pressure on all of the purple colours that I've picked out and then slowly getting heavier with the pressure on those colours to create a deeper saturation of the colour for the petal there. So on these sections as well you can see the same process. I'm also outlining most of the petals here have a really crisp edge so it was really lucky that I was able to go in with a dark pencil around the edges and really map them in and get them looking really nice and crisp. That was what I really did enjoy about this particular piece as well. Um, and you can see here I'm kind of mapping in all of the darker areas, adding in slightly pinker tones and then working in some of the darker tones over the top. So mainly using the blue violet over the top of some of these colours to create the really dark shadows through here but just filling in all of the texture and again you'll see the process of adding in the darker shadows so I'm adding in all of those folds 
I'm using the iris pencil as well and what really helps is a nice sharp pencil but not too sharp because I found that when it was too sharp that the pencil would break and it would break really easily because the Holbein pencils are a wax based pencil and they are incredibly delicate when you are in applying pressure into them so they're not necessarily fantastic for being able to build dark colours and by increasing the pressure um, but they are really nice for doing the blending and all of that kind of thing so throughout this I did find that I didn't need to use very much of a white pencil to do any blending because where the Holbein's are a wax based pencil I was finding that when I was adding them down they were kind of doing a natural blend because they're so waxy they were just layering on top of one another and smoothing out the tooth of the paper and I didn't really need to go in with any kind of lighter tones I did in a few places but that was mainly where some of the lighter tones were um, but I didn't need to go too much in, in with a lighter tone or the white pencil to help to smooth it out it just kind of happened naturally which was really nice as well it made the process incredibly smooth and yeah it was really lovely to work on this you will also notice as well that there are a few like really kind of stark little white dots that you can see on the edges of the petal and I did go in with my Sakura jelly roll pen and add these in because I wanted to add in like on the reference photo if you look at it the petals kind of have a little bit of a sparkly nature and I wanted to really create that but I didn't want to use a negative space method or anything like that because there was already a lot of texture going on and a lot of stuff so I thought the easiest way to do that would be to use the jelly roll pen and add in little white dots and it works really nicely the dots as you look at them now may not you may think oh they look a bit too stark but when the whole piece is complete and there's a few more added in it just really adds a little something extra I really like it that's my personal preference you might not like it but I like to add little elements in like that with the white pen to just help to increase the contrast in a few areas as well but yeah, I really like it and that's the way that I added in those bits. You probably saw the jelly roll pen come out for those anyway. But you can see the process still. I'm using the dark colours to add in the shadows and then I'm adding in the lighter tones. One of the lighter tones I did use for this is the lilac from the Holbein's. And this is very similar in tone to the, I think it's called the Light Violet in the Polychromos. And you cannot get hold of it anymore. But the Lilac was a lifesaver because there are no light tones of purple in the Polychromos. Apart from that Light Violet, which they have discontinued. Um, so the Lilac was really, really essential for adding in the lighter base. And I did use it quite a lot in some of those lighter areas. So if you can get your hands on a Lilac pencil or a light kind of really lilac-y coloured pencil, not necessarily from the Holbein's, then I do recommend it if you're going to tackle this because you're going to need it for some of the lighter areas because it's very difficult to create a very light purple tone like this using like a white pencil and an existing purple pencil. We can just see the last of the petal going in, you've got all of those darker areas and then I filled in the light surface and then I'm just going in using some more pink tones to add in the pinker areas and then coming in and helping to darken it up and create that texture. So you can see I've got some of these like textural lines running down the petals and I've just kind of followed the direction that the petals flowing and then just use some lines. So it's not all just shading and it's not all just really smooth. There is this textural element of some lines and I've just used a really light layer and just added in a few lines um, some of them are a little bit more kind of firmer because they are more shadowy so I have increased the pressure on the pencil um, but a lot of them are just incredibly light little details that I've added over the top and you can see here on this last little bit of petal you'll see exactly how the pencils work in order to build up the really decent saturation of colour. I did increase a lot of pressure on the pencils towards the end as well to really get that that really rich colour but you can see just how nice and easily the colours build up and it's just so pleasing to see in the end here it's just really really nice and the process was actually really simple so even though the reference photo may look daunting it did have a nice simple process and really easy to understand things. Um, yeah just lots of layering 
not necessarily going in any direction either so you can go in kind of any direction and build up a little bit of a circular motion as well to really feel the texture and get a nice smooth layer and it was such a nice thing to work on that wasn't an animal so i really do hope that you have enjoyed this and as i mentioned if you do want to follow along with the full thing hop on over to patreon i'll leave the link in the description but i hope you enjoyed watching this piece come together and i will catch you guys in the next video bye